Alrighty, folks. The love of pastry continues. Our next chef has traveled the globe to assist and learn from the greatest pastry chefs in the world. And now she has graciously brought all of her skill and knowledge back here to Chicago. She is a pastry chef instructor at the French Pastry School here at Kennedy King College. Will you please welcome Chef Kristen Ryan and her assistant, Erin Mira. Thank you very much. Well, welcome everyone. I'm extremely pleased to be here today demonstrating for you. Although I know most of you are probably getting your seats ready for uh, Chef Curtis Stone, who's coming up next. It's okay. I don't take it personally. That's why I'm here too. Don't worry. So what we are going to do today is um, macarons. All right. For those of you who do not know what macarons are, let me tell you about one of my favorite things in the world. These are macarons. They are a typical French cookie. It's a meringue shell on the outside, sandwiched in the center with something delicious like a ganache or a buttercream filling or a jam. It doesn't matter. Anything that you want to put in it, you go ahead and do, okay? Today what we are making is a chocolate raspberry macaron. I know, right? Not such a bad day in your life today. And if you stick around, kind of incentive to stay through the whole demo, I might have brought extras for you to try, just in case, all right? So why don't we go ahead and start the process. And please, if you have any questions, feel free to shout them out. I will happily try and answer. Um, or else I'll bring Aaron back up here to answer for me. OK? So what we're going to do first, like I said, this is a, a meringue-based cookie on the outside. And the meringue that I use is an Italian meringue. So it's a cooked sugar syrup that then is added to our egg whites. OK? So it's nice and firm, nice and stiff. You can make a macaron with a French meringue. Okay, which is, an, it's not a cooked sugar syrup. It's simply egg whites in sugar and then powder sugar folded together. So either way works. I like this method. It's a little more user friendly. So especially if you're a first time starting out, um, this is a little more of a success rate. Okay. Now, since I'm kind of girly myself, they're beautiful and pink. You definitely do not need to make them bright and beautiful and pink. Okay. But for all you gentlemen out there, they're just as delicious when they're pink. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is start my sugar syrup. So into my pot, I have water. And then I have a teeny bit of red coloring. OK, this is a powdered color. You certainly can use a liquid color. But if you're going to add liquid, I would also add it at this stage. I would not add the liquid into my meringue as it's whipping, because you don't want to add excess moisture into your meringue. Um, has anyone ever attempted to make a macaron out there? OK. Has anyone been successful at making a macaron? Good. See, just as many hands went up. This is, this is good, good. Um, but what happens sometimes with, with the shells of the macarons is that if you have too much moisture in the inside, they'll crack. So that's why we don't want to add any extra moisture, OK? Can everyone see in the mirror OK? Now this water turns a gorgeous, gorgeous raspberry red color. How much water? Oh, you want the secrets, don't you? <laughs> You haven't even tasted the macarons yet. You don't even know if they're good. <laughs> so basically, when you're making a meringue, you do twice as much, um, twice as much sugar to water. Okay. So in with all of my sucrose, and sucrose is just granulated sugar. It's what we buy in the bag um, at the grocery store. Okay. Now, before I get excited and I turn my induction stove on to start the process, I need to do a few more things. So here I have two scalings of egg whites. They're both equal portions. One scaling goes into my dry mixture here. Now, this dry mixture is what we call TPT. I work at the French Pastry School, which is part of the Chicago um, City Colleges. I don't speak French very well, so we're just going to forego that. But TPT stands for tant pour tant, which means equal parts of. So my mixture here is an equal part of confectionery sugar and an equal part of almond flour or almond powder, OK? Nice and finely ground. Sometimes you go to the grocery store and you find it called almond meal, which is just a little coarser ground. So you can throw it in your food processor and just bring those, um, bring those two ingredients together, and you have TPT. They don't sell this in the grocery store. They will not sell TPT like that. But long, long time ago, before any of us were born, and in France, um, they actually sold TPT because it was Machinery was not as it is today. 
right? So the machinery had a hard time grinding down the nuts into a fine flour without leaching out those oils. So what they did is they threw confectionery sugar into the mix with the nuts to help grind them down nice and finely. So that's where TPT came from. Um, and now we use it for almost everything, okay? All right, enough talking. You just want to see stuff made, right? So into the next bowl, into my beautiful KitchenAid, which mine at home is white. It's not this gorgeous lime green. I might think about reinvesting here. So into my next bowl, I have my second scaling of egg whites and then egg white powder, which is de just dehydrated egg white, okay? We add this to give strength because we want our meringue to be nice and strong and stiff. So a little bit of egg white powder. All right, are you ready for the magic? Okay, here we go. So on with the induction. And any time I cook a sugar syrup, it doesn't matter what it's for. For buttercream, for uh, macarons, I always cook my sugar syrup on high. All right, the last thing you want to do is cook your sugar syrup slowly. What happens is you evaporate too much moisture and you'll also start to cause crystallization, okay? And then maybe you've tasted a product that has become crystallized, like a, a piece of caramel, a candy, and you get that graininess in there or a buttercream that has that graininess. So cook it on high, cook it as quickly as possible, okay? And we're gonna cook this sugar syrup to 118 degrees Celsius. One of the most amazing things, we have a couple different programs in our school. We have, we have a 24 week pastry program that we learn, we teach the students everything under the sun about pastry. Um, from ice cream, which is my favorite, to macarons, to breads, to wedding cakes. And then we have a 16 week cake program too um, that teaches celebration cakes and petit fours and um, the importance of beauty and taste when you're selling something. And one of the things that's always interesting is our students come into the school and all of a sudden we start talking in grams and Celsius and our students kind of look at us like we're crazy because you haven't had to do that since you were in grade school, right? No one has forced you to learn Celsius conversion since grade school. And you usually only learn two. You learned zero and you learned 100 and everything in between had no purpose to your life, right? Here it's a little bit different. So the good news is nowadays they make thermometers very smart where you just turn the button on the back and you know what it is in Celsius and what it is in Fahrenheit so you're all right, okay? So we're cooking the sugar syrup to 118 degrees. This is what we call the soft ball stage. Okay, so before thermometers came into play, and this is the way we still do it in the kitchen sometimes, um, when we don't have a thermometer around, is you take a bowl of ice water and you stick your fingers, I see some heads nodding like, yes, you have done this before. So you stick your fingers in the ice water and you numb them up for about 30 seconds and then you go into the hot sugar and then back into the ice water. And however that sugar kind of clumps up in your fingers, if it's a little soft ball, um, if it's a hard ball, if it's even harder than that and it cracks, a soft crack or a hard crack, then you know essentially the temperature range of that sugar. So it's very easy without a thermometer to make this recipe still at home. And I'll tell you a dirty little secret, I don't own a thermometer at home and yet I still make tons of products. So I just don't see the need, you know? You can stick your fingers in hot sugar, it's not such a bad day. So what I have here, my one scaling of egg whites, and I just want to gently whip them, okay? I'm not looking for any sort of a stiff peak um, or a soft peak. All I want them to be is nice and creamy and foamy. Can you see in the mixer? Just creamy, okay? So I'm at 118. I stop my sugar syrup. Let those big bubbles go down just a little bit, okay? Because if you start to immediately pour it, you have those big clumps of hot sugar going in. So take your time. Now that all my big bubbles have gone down, very, very slowly, I'm going to take the lip of my pot onto the lip of the KitchenAid and start incorporating the sugar syrup into my egg whites. Now what I want to do is just introduce a teeny bit, okay? Because that sugar syrup is hot. It's like when you initially go to jump in a hot tub you stick your little toe in and you kind of get shocked. Same thing. 
So now we're going to pour a little bit more of that hot sugar syrup down the side and always down the side of my bowl, okay? I never want to pour my sugar syrup anywhere towards my whip attachment, okay? Because what happens is that sugar will get caught on the whip attachment and it will literally fling around the side of the bowl. Two issues. One, you lose sugar in the inside, okay? So now your meringue is not nearly as strong as it needs to be. The other is that it's very, very dangerous because you can get burned by that hot sugar kind of whipping around. So you have to be careful. So all of my sugar syrup in. Nice and slowly. All right, so once you're at the end, Thank you. Move that off to the side, and we're going to turn our mixer on to high. Now what we want to do is cool this mixture down as well as thicken it up, okay? So you're doing two things at once. So this is going to take a few minutes. So since we're all good friends now, what I thought I'd do is, you know, tell you, of course, a little story about my love affair with macarons. Um, it happened a couple years back. It was about five, four years back. I had not tried a macaron until then. I didn't know how fantastic they were. I know, right? It's terrible. I can't believe it either. So I hadn't had a macaron, and I was in Paris, and I was going to work um, at a pastry shop in Paris, and they were known for their macarons. And so I decided, you know what? Before I go and start work, I better go check this place out and really see if those macarons are worth it, if all this hoopla was worth it. So I go. I'm the typical American tourist, right? I stick out like a sore thumb. I do not mesh very well. So I go into the shop, I pick out three macarons, vanilla, pistachio, and a salted caramel. And those were the three that I decided they were good. Just wait, they were good. So those were the three that I decided were going to be my bar. So now every pastry shop I walked into, I was going to try those three flavors to see how they compared. So I walk in, I get my little bag, I decided to really make this experience count. I was going to go sit under the Eiffel Tower and eat my macarons. For whatever reason, it sounded perfect in my head. So it's a very long walk from this pastry shop to the Eiffel Tower. And I'm walking and I'm walking and I'm walking and it's cold, you know, so I'm not sweating, it's fine, I'm just walking. But I'm hungry, this is the problem. I have my little bag with three macarons and I'm starving. So I decide, what is the harm if I just crack into the bag and eat one? Even though I'm not to the Eiffel Tower yet, I'm just going to try one. So I reach in the bag, pull out the salted caramel, because that, to me, was going to be the one that I was probably most going to fall in love with. So I take that salted caramel one out, look at it. It's beautiful. It's perfect in my mind. I go to take a bite, and I kid you not, it was like the lights were shining down. It was fantastic. And then all of a sudden, I hear this and then the car stopping. I was almost hit by a car in the middle of the street as I was crossing and eating my macaron. <laughs> so <laughs> I will never forget that because then all of a sudden, you know, reality sets into play. I woke back up and I kind of looked over and he was making odd gestures to me. And I just smiled and waved to him and walked away. And that was it. I was in love. Like from that moment instantly, I was in love. So you never know. At least I'm here to tell the story. That's what I think. All right, so can you see how our meringue, after all that talking, has nicely stiffened up? It's nice and fluffy. It would be the best nail polish color. 